Today, let's talk about money, not just making money, but handling money as a small business. If all you're focused on is growing, selling, converting, all those fun things we talk about, then one thing's going to happen for sure. You're going to make money. That doesn't guarantee you won't screw things up with that money. To have an online business that's profitable is a glorious thing. But to stay in business and to get the full benefit from your business for years and years to come, it takes an added level and layer of responsibility in how you manage that money. So today, as we wrap up this year, we're getting to the end of this year, looking ahead to a new year, or whenever you're listening to this, let me share with you the three biggest money mistakes I see small business owners making, how you can avoid them, and how you can be thinking ahead of the game so that you have a not only profitable business, but a business that can last for years and years and years. Let's discuss. Welcome to episode 86 of The Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, work less, and live and give more. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. Thanks for spending some time with me today. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, I really appreciate you. I love all the reviews and feedback I'm getting on the Apple Podcast platform. It means a ton. So if you're driving or doing dishes or going out for a walk and taking a listen, I appreciate that. And if you're watching here on YouTube, thank you so much for the likes, the subscribes, the comments, really good feedback, great follow-up questions. You're smart. You're a smart group of people. I'm really enjoying the conversations we're having, and I'm excited to have you in this community. And again, I'm honored that you spent some time hanging out with me today. Going to get super practical today. We're going to talk about money, one of my favorite topics. Uh, I love, love, love money. There's been a lot of good feedback on the money management for small business episode and video that I did a while back. So I'm going to break some of that stuff down, but we're going to go a different direction today, focusing on money mistakes to avoid. So this will be less about money management in terms of like growing your money, but more about what mistakes to avoid. So we're gonna get super practical today. If you are looking to just start making some money first with your online business, um, then I wanna give you something that's gonna help you out. I wanna give you my 30-day online income jumpstart guide. My students have been loving this guide. This is a simple PDF. It's a checklist that walks you through how to go from no audience to making your first few dollars in the next 30 days. It's it's just basically a map for launching your business. It is the fastest way to make some money. Typically, my students are making between $500 and $1,000 when they follow this 30-day plan. So don't think tens of thousands of dollars in one month from now, but think making a few hundred bucks, having built an infrastructure for an online business and gotten a lot of experience in the process. So if you need to make some money quick, this business model generally isn't quick, but this is about as quick as I can get you. It's my 30-day online income jumpstart. It's literally a four-week checklist. So download it. It's free. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. Or if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to link to it below. If you're following that guide or any of the things I've been talking about and you're making some money, I'm going to golf clap because that's amazing and I'm proud of you. And it is a huge accomplishment to make money online. It's not impossible When you're starting out, it seems impossible, but when you've made your first few hundred bucks, you realize, oh, this is doable. This is doable. And then it becomes a matter of scaling and and fleshing out your product line and getting more confident and writing better sales copy. And, And then some of it is out of your control, but over time, your audience just eventually starts to grow. If you're putting out evergreen content, like I teach you, there's a point where the momentum kicks in. All of those things will happen. You will make more money. And now you have an opportunity to make mistakes with that money. We all do. We've all made them. And so what I hope to do as your friend, your big brother, whatever you want to call me, uh, Uncle Graham, someone calls me, uh, I want to help you avoid some of those mistakes. Um, I want you to stay in business for a long time, have a healthy business, and really get the full benefit of the income you're working hard to create. Does that sound good? Let's dive right in. Three simple mistakes they're, you're, they're unique in their own way. They're all important in their own way. So hang with me and please internalize these. Uh, and if you need to come back and listen again, you can. But I think these will be very practical and helpful. And maybe one of these is more of a wake-up call for you than the other two. Either way, you want to avoid all three. Mistake number one, probably one of the most common for any type of small business, is not setting aside money for taxes, either at all 
or enough. And I'm just talking about income tax, basic income tax at this point here. Like, and it, again, if you are outside the U.S., you're going to have to filter this through your own um, country's tax system. And in the U.S., I'm not even going to get into like state stuff or sales tax. It's different in every single state. So I'm just talking about the bulk of your tax, which is income tax, right? We all make an income. Just about every country I know of has an income tax, whether you have a job or a business, whatever money you personally bring home as an individual, you have to pay taxes on, right? Income tax. So it's just so common that you, whether you're a, a service provider or you're, you're selling product, you start to make money, you're so excited that you're making money, you're, stop, you're not even thinking about the fact that you have to give some of that to the government. Because if you're used to getting a paycheck, they already take out your income tax. Your federal income tax, uh, it's taken out of your paycheck before you even see it for most people. So for most Americans, transitioning out of a nine to five job, as many people in 2020 have made a transition into working for themselves because they've needed to because of COVID or whatever it is, they're 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 realizing, oh my gosh, I'm making money, but no one's taking the, the tax out of my check. Or maybe a lot of people are moving to becoming a 1099 employee, or excuse me, contractor. So you're not a W-2 employee. So even if you work for a company, they're not taking or withholding taxes for you either. A lot of people are falling into this, like I'm in the gig economy. I, I'm, I'm self-employed. I'm I'm a contractor, not an employee. And so it's a new thing to have to think about. Oh, I got to set aside my taxes and pay my taxes. Now, the good news is this is not hard, but this overwhelms people. So a lot of people just don't think about it. I've had tons of friends get into trouble at the end of the year because they haven't paid any taxes all year. And now they realize, oh, but I spent all the money that I made and I didn't pay any taxes. So now I owe taxes and I don't even have any money. That's a tough situation to be in. So you want to plan ahead. Uh, I can't give you specific tax advice because there's just so many variables. But what I can say is if you're a sole proprietor, which most people are when they start, and that's what you are by default in the U.S. to the federal government, if you haven't created an LLC and filed as an S-Corp or any of these other entities, you are already, you don't have to do anything, you are already a sole proprietor. That's by definition who you are. And when you file your taxes, as a, your 1040 in the U.S., your main tax return, there is a section called your Schedule C. And if you use TurboTax or h and Block or any of the software, you don't even have to think about this. They just ask you some questions. Hey, did you make any side income as a, like a side business? And you're like, oh, yes, I did. That's where you type in all the income you made, what your expenses were. That gets filed under your Schedule C. And so that's just part of your income. And they realize, oh, that's business income. So that's how you're going to report all your sole proprietor income for your online business. That is not only subject to your federal income tax bracket, which is your personal tax bracket. So that's based off of how much your household makes in a year, right? It's You pay that tax plus self-employment tax, which is as of right now, 15.3%. Self-employment tax includes Social Social Security and Medicare, Right. Uh, and typically when you work for somebody else, you only have to pay half of that. So when you're getting charged the FICA, the Social Security Medicare tax at, at a day job, you're really only paying half. Your employer is paying the other 7.5% or 7.65% for you. But when you work for yourself, you have to pay the whole 15.3%, which is a bummer. Uh, I don't know why that is, uh, but it is what it is. So you have to keep in mind 15.3% on top of your tax bracket. Now, that is only on your profit, aka your taxable income. So if you made $100,000 in a year, but you spent $20,000 in expenses, whether it was Kajabi or a business coach, or you bought one of Graham's courses, or you had website hosting or whatever it is, if you spent $20,000 to run your business, maybe you have an assistant, then you're only taxed on the 80,000. So that 15.3% and your tax bracket is not on your whole 100%, $100,000, it's on the $80,000. So your effective tax rate's going to be lower than that, of course, just like when you have deductions. And you're going to have your other deductions, and you get the standard deduction in the U.S. and all these things, unless you itemize. So you're not going to be paying as much as you think, but just so you're aware, it's your personal tax bracket plus 15.3%. If you have an LLC or you file as an S Corp or C Corp, then talk to your CPA, talk to your accountant. If you don't have one, get one and pay for one. 
It's worth it. You need not only are they going to help you not get in trouble with a tax man, they're going to give you tax saving strategies to set yourself up to actually keep more of your income. Very, very helpful. And then, of course, you can use them as bookkeepers so you don't have to do all that yourself. I did that for years by myself, and it's just like, I can't do this anymore. Even though I nerd out over that stuff, it is not, it's not for me. So if you are if you have a more complicated entity than a sole proprietor, talk to your CPA. And if you're in another country, talk to your tax expert to figure out how to know how much you should be setting aside for taxes. There are simple tax withholding calculators you can look up on, on the internet, but really, if you're a sole proprietor, it's based off of your household income. No matter how you make your money, it's based off of that plus self-employment tax. Very, very important to account for that. And then what you should be doing is setting aside your taxes. Every month when I was a sole proprietor, I would look at my income that came in and I would take a percentage that was based off of what our household income was plus social, you know, social security, Medicaid, all that stuff. I had a percentage in our mind that was a good rule of thumb for us. I would set that aside in a separate savings account every month because in the U.S., you're supposed to pay your taxes quarterly. And you could set that all up for free with the, the EFTPS.gov electronic federal taxpayer system. You can Google all of that. Set up an account, and that way you can just draft it out of your bank account. But you can do that once a quarter. You pay them once a quarter. There's four dates a year you need to pay those estimated tax payments. But I would just set aside my taxes every month. I, I don't want to like assume all the money in my bank account is mine. Do you know what I'm saying? I want to know that if I made 10000 and I have a percentage that should go to tax, I'm going to pull that out, put it in my tax account, so I don't even touch it for a while. And then once a quarter, I'll pay all my taxes. That's the way I did it for years as a sole proprietor. So much easier. You won't get into trouble. And at the end of the year, if you overpaid, you'll get a refund like everybody else. And if you underpaid, at least you've underpaid only by a little bit, and then you're not like hit with your whole tax bill. So please, set aside money for income tax. I know that is so boring. I hate taxes. I hate having to pay them. I ha hate having to plan for them. Uh, I pay a lot of taxes. I'm not a fan, generally speaking. Uh, but you have to take it seriously. It's part of the responsibility and part of the privilege of being in business for yourself is that's one of the responsibilities that comes along is you have to manage that, okay? So that's one of the biggest mistakes that gets a lot of small businesses in trouble and they never be able to grow past that because they can't pay their taxes. It's easy to do. You just got to do it. Mistake number two, basing your budget off of your highest income month. Have you ever done this? You're making like $2,000 a month, let's say, in your business pretty consistently. And then all of a sudden, you have a $4,000 a month. And you think, wow, I make $4,000 a month now. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You did that month. You don't make it every month. Now, maybe you do. Maybe you launch some membership site that has no churn and you can predict exactly that you're going to make $4,000 every month here on out. Certainly, that's possible, and you'll get there at some point if you're if you aren't there yet. But just because you made four thousand one month doesn't mean that's what you make every month. The temptation when you grow, have a big month or a big couple of months, is to think this is the new norm. This is my new normal. We do this when we have a, a, a nine to five job as well with a salary, right? You get a higher salary. And we're like, oh, this is our new norm, and so what do we do? our lifestyle inflates with our income, right? The, the great news with a salary is that at least it's a salary. You know you're going to be making that much. When you work for yourself, you can't even, you shouldn't be doing that with your salary anyway. That's how we never, that's how we can make more every single year and still never save money because we just keep inflating our lifestyle and it's just a deadly trap. But it's a double deadly trap when you're in business for yourself because the moment you have a good month or two, you start to think, ooh, this is what's possible. This is the new norm. Half of that's true. This is what's possible. That's not the new norm yet. It will be over time. But when you're in business for yourself, your income is based off of averages. And it's based off of the low end, should be, of averages. So you know this when you're in your right mind. But when you make a lot of money one month, you're not in your right mind. You're like drunk off the high of seeing numbers you haven't seen before. Okay? So... Here's some simple advice for you. It's a little murky when you're in business for yourself and so you make 2000 and you might pull some of that out except for your taxes and use to pay your bills or do whatever. What I want you to start thinking about 
is your business like a business that you work for? If you're an S Corp LLC, then this is exactly legally what you do. You are both the owner and single employee of your business. For example, in my businesses, both of them, I am the owner of the Recording Revolution. I am the owner of Graham Cochran LLC, but I'm also the sole employee of, so I with, I take a paycheck from, a W-2 paycheck from those businesses, right? So I own all the profit, but I take a paycheck from, and I have to determine what my paycheck is. Even if you don't have it all set up as separate entities, what I want you to do is functionally operate that way. So your business makes money, but you have to pretend that it's not all yours. You are an employee of that business, so you have to decide what the business can afford to pay you. Have you ever wondered how employers can guarantee your salary when their income fluctuates every single month, just like your business income fluctuates every single month? If you work for a company and they pay you a guaranteed salary of $4,000 a month, how are they guaranteeing that? What happens if COVID happens and they run out of money one month or they have a really, really bad stretch in business? How do they continue to pay you? They can continue to pay you because of a couple things. One, they've budgeted for it, based your salary off of what they reasonably can afford to pay you, even in lower months, and they have cash reserves, hopefully, as opposed to a credit line, which just depends on the business. They've done the calculations and decided, we can afford to pay this person $4,000 a month in perpetuity because that person brings in a lot more profit than they cost us, and we've done the calculations, and even if we have a bad stretch, this is something we can afford. You got to do the same thing for yourself. What is the lowest amount of money you can reasonably expect to pay yourself as an employee? That's the way you got to think. Not that you want to be cheap with yourself. You want to be responsible. You got two hats, right? You have the employee hat, which is I'm the one doing the work. I expect to get rewarded and you should be rewarded. And then you have the employer hat, which is I got to keep the doors open to the business. So I can't be promising my awesome employee, which is myself. I know this is getting weird. I can't be promising my, my awesome employee some crazy salary if I can't guarantee that we can bring in that and more every single month. So if you have a big month, you can't pay yourself all that money. That's irresponsible as the business owner hat. It might be nice as the, the employee hat, but it's irresponsible as the business owner hat. So your job is to look at the last six to 12 months of how much did you make? What was the average amount? And then if you want to be you know, conservative, take an 80% of, of the average. And, but again, even then, that can't be off of what you made gross, right? That has to be minus taxes, minus expenses. So look at your profit, maybe, over the last 12 months. Average, and then 80% of that. You have to pay yourself the smallest amount you can get away with. Now, the good news is you're also the boss, so you can give yourself a raise at any point. You can also take distributions from your businesses at any point, but you have to do that when it makes sense. You have to do that when you know you can reasonably afford to increase your lifestyle. So a good example of this this year with a lot of online businesses, myself included for both of my businesses, my wife as well, and so many of my online business friends, when lockdowns were happening in April and May, everyone was at home, everyone was on the internet. There was more web traffic, there was more YouTube traffic, there was more, more sales of products. Both of my brands had great months without me doing anything different. Why? Because everybody was at home on the internet more than ever. If you were to base your income off of April and May of this year and go, wow, this is this is the this is 2020 now. This is the new norm. You would have gotten yourself into trouble. I knew better. I've done this for 11 years. I know how this works. It was a good couple of months. It was a fun ride. What do I do? I just keep that money in my account. Got some extra profit. That's great because what if we have some bad months up ahead? Now I can use some of that profit to keep my salary flowing. You see how that works? You need the high months to build up reserves to help you out in the low months. It all evens out in the wash. So don't be overly in love with your high months. Celebrate them because that shows what's possible. You brought in 5,000, you brought in 10,000, you brought in 2,000, whatever your highest month was, celebrate that. But don't expect that to be your norm, right? 
I did a product launch a couple years ago, did $300,000 in one week. Does that mean I'm gonna make $300,000 every single week? No. But if I had been just so like in love with this concept that, oh my gosh, I made 300K this week. Imagine what my, my salary could be. Imagine what, like that's, you know, I gotta pay taxes. I gotta pay contractors to help me with that launch. I gotta, I gotta realize that like, I'm gonna have some months that are a lot lower than that, so we should probably keep that in reserve. We gotta have perspective. Employer hat, employee hat. So don't base your budget off your highest month. If you wanna be crazy, base it off your lowest month. I say base it off of 80% of your average monthly profit. All right, profit after taxes, after business expenses. Might be depressing, but this is how you gotta operate if you wanna stay in business for a long time, okay? Third and final small business money mistake that I see people making is not having a plan for your profit. Let's talk about that profit. When you become successful, when you see momentum, and many of you are experiencing this, a lot of my students are starting to see this, it's picking up, they're figuring it out. They're, they've launched a couple of products and now they're starting to find a sweet spot of what their audience wants. They're getting more traffic. Their email list is growing. When you start to get that traction, it feels so good. When it feels good, even if you're, you're, you're paying your taxes, you're paying yourself a reasonable salary, so your, your bank account is hopefully accruing profit, right? You've got extra money in the account. You've had some launches. Maybe you just came out of a Black Friday sale. Maybe you just came out of a big launch. You've got extra money sitting aside. Do you have a plan for that profit? If you don't, the money's going to be gone. Right, Solomon talks about this in the book of Proverbs that basically money will grow wings and fly away if you don't pay attention to it. He says, pay careful attention to your flocks and herds, which in agricultural days was your wealth. Pay careful attention to your flocks or herds because wealth does not last forever. Are you paying attention to the profit and do you have a plan even before you make profit for what you're gonna do with that profit? You should. You should because two things are going to happen. One, it's going to disappear. And two, you might be, and I, I'm not trying to depress you, but this might be the depressing episode. You might be in your best years of business right now. Now, I, I hope that you're, all, you're always growing. That's not realistic for most businesses. I don't know where you are, but I'm, I'm speaking to you if you're one of the more successful students of this show. You're making good money. I know the natural state is to assume, oh, it's only going to get better from here. Imagine what I could do. I've seen so-and-so make this kind of money. I've seen so-and-so make this kind of money. Well, let me play devil's advocate. What if you are in your best years of business? What if this is the most amount of money you will ever make? And what if you're a year or two away from a bit of a decline? Even if it's not because you did anything wrong, your industry just changes, a competitor comes in that just disrupts the market. These are rare instances, but they could happen. I want you to think not just worst case scenario, but let's be realistic. What if you're in your best years? If you're just spending your profit, having a good time, taking some trips, buying a new car, that's all great stuff. But if you didn't strategically use your profit wisely, you're going to really regret these years that you didn't realize were your best years. So let me give you three Four, let me give you four things you should plan to do with your profit. Just my, my recommendations to you. Number one, build up an emergency fund for your business. What are your business expenses every single month? Any employees, any team members, contractors, software you pay for every month, tools you use, hosting. What does it cost for you to physically run your business? Email marketing platform, whatever. Add all that up, look at your credit card statement, look at your bank statements the last few months. What is the average cost per month to keep your business operational? Times that by six. That's what I want you to set aside in a separate savings account. So if it costs you $1,000 a month to keep your business running, I want you to have $6,000 set aside in your business emergency fund. So that if income completely dries up, you could keep running the business for another six months to give yourself a fighting chance to make some profit again. That's the first thing is, is six months of your business expenses set aside. Number two, pay off personal debt. Do you have any credit card debt? Do you have any student loan debt? 
Do you have any automobile debt? Medical bills? Do you have a mortgage? Pay it all off. Use your business, your extra profit, to pay all of that off. You can never go wrong with paying off debt. It is a 100% guaranteed return on investment for two reasons. One, it's a 100% guarantee that that debt is paid off. Every $5,000 you pay off in debt is 100% gone. So it's a guaranteed reduction of debt. And also, whatever the interest rate you're paying on that debt, that's the interest that you're effectively earning on your money because you no longer pay that. So if you're paying 17% on your credit card, which is average but low for credit cards, every $10 or $100 or $1,000 you pay off your credit cards, it's like getting a 17% return on your money. I don't know where you're going to find 17% return on your money, let alone guaranteed. So it is a no-brainer investment because if you had a couple of good years and you, you paid off all your debt and your business dried up, at least now you're debt-free. You will never regret paying off debt. That actually rhymes. Sorry, I started to think about songs, like making up a song. That's how my brain works, turn it into a song. Okay, pay off personal debt. It's one of the best things you can do with your, your profit. Once you've done that, or while you're doing that, take your profit and invest in your retirement account. When you go to work for somebody else, if they're a good employer, they're gonna try to tell you, HR is gonna try to tell you, sign up for your 401k, sign up for your 403b, sign up for your retirement plan, your thrift savings plan, whatever it is, like set it up, and they're going to encourage you to put some of your paycheck into it. They might even incentivize you by matching. Their whole goal is to get you to save for retirement because guess what? No one else will. What's going to happen when you're 60, 65, 70, and you can't work anymore? How are you going to live? Look, if you start investing as a 20-year-old, 30-year-old, 40-year-old, and you have 20, 30, 40 years to invest and let that money compound, especially if it's in a tax-favorable account, like a 401k, where you don't pay any taxes on it when it goes in, or as it uh, compounds, it defers the taxes to later, you can grow substantial wealth because of the compounding in the years. If you're not taking advantage of that, you're missing a huge opportunity. You can never go back in time. You can never take advantage of that in the past, so you take advantage of it now. So if you're working for yourself, you can, in America, it's the same in other countries, but you can open up your own individual retirement account. There's a lot of different ones a SEP IRA, an individual 401k, a bunch of different options here. You can set up, you can fund yourself, you can buy index funds, you can buy whatever you want. But please, do yourself a favor and set aside part of your profit every month and put it into your retirement account. Do not wait until you feel like you have more money. That doesn't make sense. Start now, even if it's only 100 bucks a month. Fund your retirement. And fourth and final thing you should plan to use your profit for is to invest in your business. Invest in your business. Invest in education. Invest in your team. Invest in tools that make your business easier, more profitable, or simpler. Whatever it takes, invest in your business because it's a tax-deductible expense. And if it allows you to make more money, then it's one of the best investments you can make. Bet on yourself. Bet on the fact that if, if you have complete control over your business, there's a lot of growth there if you make a strategic investment. Don't just buy crap because of the tax deduction. Don't just spend money because you can save money on taxes. That doesn't make sense mathematically. But if there is something that you think can help grow your business, invest in yourself because it's tax deductible and it'll help you grow. Make sense? So have a plan for your profit. So, so important. One of the things Shay and I, my wife, say, do all the time and say all the time is, we never want to assume business will ever be this good again. And five years from now, what will we have regretted not using that money for when we had it? I'll slip in one of the things that we, we plan for our profit. And this is a personal thing for, for us, giving it away. Giving it away. I think one of the greatest responsibilities we have as wealth creators, which is what an entrepreneur is, because you can create money out of thin air, uh, and there's no cap on your income, is to take some of that and use it to fund charities, ministries, help out people directly that need it the most. We don't have to. I don't think, this is a separate conversation for another day, I don't think that money should be taken from us through high taxation and given and distributed. I think it should be a personal decision, but I do think successful business owners who have profit have a moral obligation in a healthy way to look out for their fellow man. I think all of us should be giving part of our paycheck away. I'm not saying this is 
fall solely on entrepreneurs, but we have a special skill, a wealth building skill, that it is a great opportunity and I think a moral obligation to create wealth and use some of it to help other people along the way. It's certainly a privilege as well to be able to do that. So Shay and I are big on this. I talk about this a lot, but we fund things through our church. We are big with Compassion International. We love this organization. We sponsor 10 kids around the world that we love, and then we give directly to the organization because we believe in what they're doing. So we're like a business partner with them as a donor. Uh, and then we have, we always set aside a percentage of our profit just for what we call undesignated giving. We have a savings account where we just we just fill it up with this percentage every month. And it's just there in case we see a specific need. It could just be a friend. It could be someone in the community. It could be a you know disaster relief for something that happens. It's not designated for anything, but it's there so we can make a split second decision to give money away. Giving money is one of the biggest things we plan to use our profit for. And it's the most fun you'll ever have. It's tax deductible, at least in the U.S., uh, and it just, it's, it's got a multiplicative effect. I mean, when you take money that you've created and you put it in the hands of someone who's doing a lot of good in the world, especially if it's an organization you trust and you know they're managing it well, or you're just blessing a family, you have no clue how much that wealth multiplies in terms of the good that it does. That it, it just, it's insane to think what even $1 given in the right place can do. So consider planning to give some of your profit away. I think it's one of the best things you could do. You'll never regret that. Again, that's one of the things Shane and I talk about. If we look back in five years and say, what do we regret not doing? We probably would regret not giving a lot away. When, when we had the opportunity to give so much, and if we didn't, oh, so sad. We could have given so much away. Not that we should give it all away. I'm not trying to guilt you at all. Think of it as an investment, because it is. When you, in, when you pay off your debt, you're investing in yourself by getting back to zero. When you save in your retirement account, you're investing in your future. When you save for your kid's college, you're investing in their future. When you give to a charity or organization you believe in, you're investing in other people's lives. It's all investment. When you buy a course to, to learn something for yourself, you're investing in yourself. It's always an investment. It's just a matter of where are you investing. Those are all great places to invest your profit. Okay? There you go. Those are the three money mistakes. Not setting aside money for taxes, basing your budget on your highest income month, and not having a plan for your profit. I'd love to hear from you. If you're watching on YouTube, leave me a comment below. Let me know what's one of the biggest money mistakes you've made if you feel like you can pass it along to people uh, to encourage us and help us all out. And if you haven't made any of the money mistakes, which one of these resonated with you the most? Which one of these you're like, oh my gosh, I need to really pay attention to this. I'm curious to know. Leave me a comment below and let me know. And like I said at the beginning of this episode, if you want to plan as we're going to the new year to kick off your online business and actually make money for the first time, you're just lurking around. You're like, I haven't made money mistakes yet because I haven't made any money yet. I really want to start my business. Then take my 30-day online income jumpstart guide. It's absolutely free. It's a four-week checklist, week one, week two, week three, week four. Go from no audience to making money in 30 days. It is fun. It'll teach you a lot. You'll get some cash in your pocket and you'll be set up to be able to start to grow and scale your online business from there. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart or grab the link below this video if you're watching on YouTube. That's it. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me today. It means a ton. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. And uh, I'll talk to you in another episode real soon. Bye.